literary activists. By literary, I mean poets, screenplay writers, novelists, playwrights, short story writers, biographers, nonfiction writers, and even those writing computer games. That PhD after my name is in storytelling for computer game design. We will be exploring three particular fields of storytelling. How things are, the processes people engage in to create change, and what a better world looks like. Any one story could make use of one, two, or all three of these areas. With today's video, we will begin to touch on grounding ourselves in the reality of how things are. We consume an immense number of stories every day of every week each year throughout our lives. According to SJ Insights, the website for a market research company, People are exposed to 3,000 to 20,000 marketing messages a day. Many of those rely on stories in order to be memorable. Phil Hopkins, in his book, Mass Moralizing, Marketing and Moral Storytelling, expands on this by saying, These are the stories we consume and inhabit. They surround us constantly talking about the same things, urging the same activity, uttering the same magic words and promising largely the same dream world. They configure us in particular ways, mirroring but reshaping and reorienting our desires and dreams, presenting quite particular and limited possibilities for what kind of person to be and how to become that person. As an example, you may have been raised with stories about how someday you will be married and by that simple act you will live happily ever after. However, upon marriage, you might be surprised to find the happiness is not automatic. You have to work at that relationship year in and year out. That's the reality. Without stories of some sort to prepare yourself for the intricacies of married life, you may find yourself struggling to figure things out. Add to that a message that marriage is you and your family's best hope of escaping hardship, and you end up with a predominance of stories that will jolly you into doing the thing that is most convenient for your culture, but perhaps not you individually. As British Ghanaian philosopher Kwame Apia says, stories enmesh people in a single society by transmitting pictures of how the world is or ought to be. But what if our society is proving in various ways to be self-destructive or destructive of others? Then there will be layers upon layers of stories which are validating and holding those behaviors in place. These stories will be sticky because they benefit those in power, provide comforting familiarity for a significant part of the populace. When people share certain cultural understandings, they feel they understand the world. They feel safe because they know what to expect and what is expected of them. Should they become confronted by a situation whereby their cultural understanding fails them, they can become fearful, reactive, and aggressive. This is where providing plenty of alternative visions of life through story can be helpful. These are new maps for new territory, and the more solidly based on reality, the more helpful. We need to stand strong in ensuring people have these so that we can all smoothly move into different ways of living. These are the questions we must grapple with. What is life really like for me? How does it differ from social expectations? What is life like for anyone or any group who do not fit into mainstream social expectations? Why is it like that? Then, with the answers you find, ask yet again, why is it like that? And keep on asking until you get at some root causes. This is a search for truth, 
and none of us are going to get it right first go or even second or third go. But this has long been the work of writers and storytellers. To help with your ability to write at this level of truth, I would suggest two things. First, read a few authors who have really dug deep to reveal lesser known realities. Authors such as Upton Sinclair and his book, The Jungle, about people suffering under poor working conditions at a canning factory. Or Angie Thomas and the book, The Hate You Give, about police violence. These are part of a genre known as social problem fiction. Second, do your research. Spend time with people and situations you wish to represent, even if you will be fictionalizing them. When I wrote my musical Share, which is about youth homelessness, I spent months in front of a town hall with protesters out to stop laws negatively targeting those sleeping on the street. I spoke with university students who were living in their cars and recent graduates who couldn't find work and so were sleeping under bridges. What we were told in some newspapers bore very little resemblance to what I was seeing and certainly what I was being told by those most affected. Author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie says, many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. What we need are more truth tellers, even when that truth is uncomfortable, not just for others, but for ourselves as well. You can only solve a problem when you can see it and acknowledge it, and we will all be better off when we achieve resolution to our most pressing problems. Thank you for your time and interest in this important subject. I hope this has been of help to you. Click the subscribe button below if you want to know more. See you soon!